This is Gilbert Andrew Garcia. Listen to my radio show, A Tip from Gilbert. Talk, inspiration, and prayer every Monday from 11 a.m. till noon on Houston's Gospel Leader, KWWJ. 1360 AM and streaming live on KWWJ.org. Listen on the legendary KYOK 1140 AM and streaming live on KYOKradio.org. KCOH 1230 AM, The Source on San Geek Radio 95.1 FM 1460 AM and Aliento Radio 101.7 FM and 1540 AM. Call in at 833 832- Two five seven zero eight zero seven five, and follow me on social media. See you then. All right, Houston, here we go. This is Gilbert Garcia with another episode of A Tip from Gilbert. Thank you, studio, studio audience. Thank you for all of that. And you know what? It's going to be, you know, remember Ed Sullivan? Nobody knows Ed Sullivan except someone like me, right? Because you got to be someone a little bit older. He only says, it's going to be a really big show, a really big show. Well, we're going to have a very good show today. And we got lots to say. I have, first of all, uh, my favorite state rep in the whole world, the whole universe, Miss Christina Morales. Miss uh, Christina Morales, welcome. Thank you so much, Gilbert, for and, and, being on your show. Well, of course, and then your family, I mean, y'all are like, you're like royalty Aww. there in the East End, you know, you and your family, because y'all been there, I don't know, 100 years. Yes. And, I mean, really, and y'all been there serving the community. You've had your place there for the female funeral home, excuse me, all your relatives. I mean, I really think it's amazing. And I know somewhere your parents are looking down saying, Man, our, our our little one just is so great. Thank you. And now you have you now you have kids, right? I have two kids. Do you have any kids? Grandkids? My uh, seven-year-old twin grandson. No. Yes. So I'm so excited. I'm a grandma, and you know who knows the legacy will carry on. We'll you, see what they are interested in. You're the youngest <laughs> grandma I've ever seen. <laughs> Thank holy, you. Holy cow! And let me ask you this: um, They're twins? Are they boys? Girls? Mixed? They're boys. They're uh, boys. Are they identical? They're not identical. They look completely different. No one would know they were twins. Wow. <laughs> different personalities and everything. It's been fun raising twins oh, as a family. How, oh, I mean, you know, my wife says, and honey, if you're listening, she is so convinced she'd be the best grandmother, of course, after you, ever in the, <laughs> in the universe. Uh, yes. So we're just waiting for one of our kids to sort of, you know, surprise us with this. Although, Benjamin, if you're listening... Not yet. So, uh, you know what I mean? Not yet. And then we have a, a really wonderful person I'm getting to meet because she's an a activist there on the East End, and she's just a delight. And that's Miss Patricia Cabrera. Welcome for being on the show. Oh, thank you, Gilbert. Thank you for giving us this time. Of course. Please move the mic up a little bit closer, both of y'all, and f- bring your chairs up a little bit. I want to make sure everyone hears every single word. And i got to start, though, because um, – now that I've been doing the show, I get people that often send me prayers and things like that. So I just want to say one at the beginning, and I'll say one at the end. So Danny Rutherford, if you're out there listening, I'm going to read the let, one that you sent to me. He sends me some almost, uh, oh, I don't know, almost twice a week or so. So it says, this is my scripture for today. Of course, it was a couple of days ago, but I kept it. You are blessed to be a blessing. Our Father allows us to experience the low points of life in order to teach us lessons that we could learn in no other way. Sometimes our lives have to be completely shaken up, changed, and rearranged to relocate us to the place where we're meant to be. Remember, we have survived everything we have gone through up to this point. The best day of our life is yet to come. Wishing you a refreshing and energizing start to your day. Danny, I really appreciate that. Um, And I really appreciate you being thoughtful to send me all of those. All right, I'm going to do one more then. All right. The other one is from Miss Georgia Provost. And, of course, a lot of us know her because she's an icon. So, Miss Georgia, if you're listening, because I know you listen to the show all the time. Good morning. There is no storm that God won't carry you through, no bridge that God won't help you cross, no battle 
that God won't help you win. Trust God and never give up. Amen. That's a beautiful one. So I want to talk about a couple of things before I go into the main issue at hand. And that is, uh, how about this March Madness? I mean, I don't know about you guys, but it seems like uh, March Madness is so fun. Isn't it? I mean, because it's always unpredictable. And these young, because they're really like, I mean, they look like huge men and huge, wonderful women. But the point is, they're young. And think about it. Some of these kids are like 19 or 20 years old, and they're playing their hearts out. And, you know, they're just really going for it. And so that is why it's just so amazing. And, of course, my, my team, of course, my real team is the Houston Cougars, but my other team is my own alma mater, Yale. They, of course, the Ivy League, people think, well, you know, they really don't really have lots of athletes and things and all that kind of thing. And it's kind of true. But at the end of the day, they won and beat Auburn. uh, And it was like the last 10 seconds was just chaotic. And they're a small team. They're not real big. They don't have any seven-footers or anything like that. But what's interesting about them is they play like a team. They're always passing. They're always and, – and that's how the, someone like that, can a David, can beat the Goliath because it was team ball, uh, and it was just beautiful to watch. And then, of course, uh, we're conflicted at my house because, you know, my son went to A&M and my – my wife went to AM and there we were. I don't know if we were, who was, you know, rooting for whom. I was rooting for the Cougars, right? But boy, what a great game. It was a good game. Oh my God. And there it was. And once they got like tied, it was like, oh my God. When that guy, wasn't his name Garcia? The guy, he, he I think it was named Garcia. Someone co- correct me if I'm wrong. And there he is when there's like one second left and he hit a three pointer to send it to overtime. I mean, wow. What a deal. Um, well, I also want to, well, you know, we already have a caller, so let's hold our topic. Jerry Rodriguez. Jerry, are you there? Put him on through. Yes, Gilbert. Yes, sir, Gilbert. I'm here. How are you, sir? Jerry, what do you got for us today on a tip from Gilbert? Uh, I wanted to say two things, sir. First and foremost, number one, I wanted to wish everybody a, a happy and safe Monday. I know it's raining out there, but just to be safe on the roads and all that good stuff. Well, thank you uh, for that. Yeah. Uh, and number two, I just wanted to remind everybody that I know that uh, March 5th is sober. Uh, a lot of elections passed, but we still have more elections coming up at the end of May, specifically mine. Uh, I'm running for <laughs> Harris County. <laughs> I'm running for- not, 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 that you, not, that, not that you're like <laughs> looking at it or anything. Keep going. No, keep no, going. No. Yeah, not that I'm counting days or anything. Yeah. But I just want to remind everybody that I am running for Harris County Constable Precinct 5. That's more on the west side of town. And I would love for everybody to come out and vote again come at the end of May. Early voting is going to be May 20th through the 24th, and Election Day is 28th. It's one of those things where we got so many folks out here in, in, in our in the Harris County, but we need everybody to come out and vote. Just come out and vote, regardless of who you're voting for. Just vote, vote for somebody, hopefully me, but anybody just to come out and vote. Well, let's yeah. go let, Let's go back. I want to give you a little bit of airtime here. So tell me your yeah. background again. You're in law enforcement, right? That's right, sir. So right now, I actually currently work at Precinct 5. I've been there for almost 20 years at this point. Uh, I've been in law enforcement for a little over that, but most of my time has been at Precinct 5. So I know that place inside and out, just like a, like, like if, it's like it's like my second home, for Wait, the most part, yes. You know, the Chronicle's been doing this es- expose on constables, and the one That's thing right. I really never really grasped was how close they are to the people. Uh, and yeah. how when people really need uh, support, they often just call the constable. And I just thought that was wonderful. So you probably know lots of people there because you probably have served or, or you know, had a service call or something like that. Am I right? Yes, sir. Correct. Absolutely. Uh, most of my time has been directly with the citizens here at Precinct 5. They, a lot of those folks know me by name. They have my direct cell phone number. They can call me anytime they want. That is so great. Well, share your your number with us here. What's your number? That way people know sure. that, number one, um, they can reach you. And number two, how can they get involved with the race or anything like that? Sure, absolutely. So my direct cell phone number, again, my direct cell phone number is going to be 713-898-4043. And I know a lot of folks are like, oh, you probably shouldn't share your number. Well, why not? If you want to reach me, call me. I, I'd be more than glad to talk to you about everything and anything when it comes to my race or anything that you have. 
this is what I'm here for. I'm a public servant, and my here my my goal is to serve you guys. See, I agree with you, but I remember one time. You know, I'm a CNBC contributor, and I had to take a pause because I ran for mayor, and I'm about to re-energize. And uh, I remember they coined me the Chronicle did the Bond King of Texas, and you know, I mean, <laughs> they, they they come up with these things, right? I guess it's just yes. to sell newspapers. But the bottom line is. Um, so the, the lady goes, so Gilbert, I hear you're the bond king, the bond king of Texas. Um, and I said, well, my wife reminds me, I'm not the bond king of 4030 Durness way. And, boy, <laughs> and that's, and I said, and that's my address. And I mean, within like five minutes after that episode, my wife called me, what are you doing? Giving out our address on national TV. And I said, well, honey, you know, and we're an opening book. So I appreciate that. Well, let us, I'm going to yeah. give you one more thing. Um, What's the one thing that, I don't know, you're going to be different about or, or, or what's, what's like the, the biggest thing you see is the biggest issue there? So, you know, why should someone vote for you? So give, give me that. Give me that spiel. Sure, sure. You know, I'll make it quick. At the end of the day, we could talk about education, certifications, and all that good stuff. And, of course, that's super important. But the very most thing that's going to separate me from everybody else is that I truly care about my community. I live in Precinct 5. This is my home. So I have a, a severe vested interest as to what happens in our district. And it's it's the idea that I am a community man. Uh, I have a great track record of helping out the community. It's 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 who I am. So that's what's going to separate me from everybody else, because uh, I'll say right now, we have lost a touch or a couple of steps when it comes to community engagement. That's where we need to be. That's why I intend to bring Precinct 5 when elected constable for preaching five. Very good. Well, I wish you much uh, luck and success, as they say. And thank you for calling in the show. And thank you for running. Always a pleasure talking to you, Gilbert. Yes, Julius. sir. Thank you. All right. Thank you. My pleasure. What a great guy. He's been on the show a couple times. And, uh, I, you know, he's just what a, what a great guy. So let's go to the issue at hand, Miss Patricia. So, you know, you know, when you first brought up to me, this whole concept of Greyhound moving their main terminal to the community and the neighborhood. I went back and I started look, uh, Googling, like, you know, how did that happen? And, you know, all I could find was one article that was like in December, and it wasn't even very big. And I'm thinking, well, golly, you know, probably nobody probably saw that because I read the Chronicle and – I don't remember seeing that. And it's kind of like if they were going to do something like that, shouldn't there have been, I don't know, community meetings or something about, like that or certain uh, elected officials, the state rep, the, the, you know, the council people have been notified. And, you know, it just seems to me like this was a, I don't know, a cram down or something. How does it feel? I mean, do you say to yourself, how did that happen? It was, yeah. I mean, it's the scenario is, Tuesday, we saw it on the news that they were closing down Midtown and they were moving to Magnolia Park opening on Thursday. So it was like just like that. Two days. And two days. In two days. And the elected officials, the city councilmen said, uh, no one, no one said anything to me. The mayor said no one's called me or told me. And so, um, you know, no, no one knew anything other than, uh, all the news you ever heard about the Greyhound station in Midtown was was bad, negative, right? So why would you welcome this addition into a residential area in Magnolia Park with much less um, uh, footprint, right? right it's a right. much smaller area and and all the element that it that it attracts. Well, I will tell you that maybe I'm just a, a skeptic. You cannot convince me. So don't no one tell me with a straight face that nobody knew that was going to happen. You just can't convince me. You I mean you know you can't even you know move you, you can't even do a garage sale in like two days. I mean it, to move a whole operation with all that. I mean I've been in that uh, bus terminal, right? That whole it's a big waiting area and all the bays. Um, to move that is a major move that takes months of planning and so i you know you're just never going to convince me about it that it just happened uh and if it did just happen well i'll be the first one to apologize on this air but it just doesn't make sense to me it just doesn't add up so just go through it again so just for everyone listening so the bus station 
um, there is in Midtown. It was in Midtown. And it was a pretty big footprint because they had the waiting area. They had a bus bays and everything. And so we discovered, again, it was last December. It was a small um, article that they now have closed that uh, uh, location and they moved into the East End community. Well, did anyone say, wait a minute? I mean, I mean, I, I just know, you know, now let me just say this, and we all know this. Um, they would never put that in River Oaks, would they? No, no, really, come on. I mean, I mean, am I right or am I wrong? They would never do that, right? But yet, here they go, in, in our community, it's always, seems our community, those cement uh, places, I mean, it's always there in our community. The dumps, I mean, someone just needs to uh, say, it's not right. So, Christina Morales, now, you know, you're an elected official. Did you know about it? I had no clue. You had no clue, right? No. Um, is it in your district? It's two blocks um, north of my district. So it's technically someone could say, well, they didn't need to tell you because it wasn't in your district. Someone Correct. could say that. But two blocks away is going to affect the whole neighborhood, oh, yes. including your district. Yes. as I, Several of my constituents who live two blocks away in a neighborhood text me regularly to let me know about their concerns with Greyhound. I mean, I, I totally get it. So let me ask you this. Is anyone, I mean, how many, well, let me take a step back. I mean, there's so much to say about this thing. Is the whole Main Street or the main uh, uh, Midtown, is it closed? Does anyone know? Totally closed? There's no bays or nothing? There's no more buses going through there? It's, it's boarded up. Yeah. It's boarded up? Okay, I just hadn't noticed. But I typically come down that way, but I just had, didn't notice. notice. Um, so the area where they moved, how many sort of bays, they call them bays, right? Mm -hmm. uh, like lanes do they have there? Do you know? So in Midtown, it was 15 bays, I believe. 15. So, so that means, uh, everybody, that you could have a footprint of 15 different um, buses at one time there loading. And then it's kind of like for a doctor, they have a lane, you know, where they can only see a patient in that room. And then another patient, they have one lane. Well, so this was like a lane at 15 lanes. So how many did they have here in uh, Midtown? So... In I'm sorry, I'm was sorry. I'm in Magnolia Park. Yeah. So they were also leasing a, a property in Magnolia Park. So there were um, already like three bays there. So there's three, may, maybe four. Um, and it's just the area to, to maneuver around, right? It's on Harrisburg Boulevard. So there's already the train coming down. Right. There's traffic. There's a bike lane. Uh, you know, and there there are other bus companies that go to Mexico that operate out of there. But um, but it was it was already congested. The traffic right. coming up Wayside, there's construction on Wayside. It it just did not make just give you business sense. Right. How they were going to transfer all of their business to Magnolia. Park. Well, let me ask you this. Um, how long has that location been there? Do you know? I, I don't know. I but don't it's know. been a while? It's It's been a while, but um, what I heard was it seemed like they had been increasing the number of arrivals and departures because um, I think the city councilman staff at, at that time said, you know, we've been noticing like an increase in the unhoused people under the mm -hmm. under 45, and we didn't know where it was coming from. So it's possible that, you know, they had already been increasing because as we peel this onion, or, you know, round and, and Greyhound came to, to the community later in 2024 and, you know, after the new year started, um, they said we received a letter in April from the mayor's office telling us we needed to close down the Midtown terminal. So who said that? Greyhound. La you mean as in last year, April? Yes, 2023. Okay. And, and who was it from? And what was the reason? They didn't say who it was from, but they said, well, I'm sure pressure from the Midtown area. right? Did, did they uh, release the letter? No, they just, they just announced this and I'm just doing the timeline in my head 
because um, there was an article that I found in a publication, a transportation publication in July, a July edition that said uh, Greyhound stations are moving in four cities and they named Houston. So there, someone knew. So if the mayor's office reached out to Greyhound in April and told them they were gonna, they needed to move, I find it hard to believe that there wasn't back and forth. Okay, oh, we're yeah, moving. The, the, in. There's just not a letter that just says, by the way, you just got to move. It doesn't work like that. Well, you know what? Um, now, I, I'm not uh, Wayne Dochafino or anything. And by the way, you got to love Wayne, right? I mean, for, I mean, no matter where you are, the political spectrum and Wayne, if you're listening, man, you always do great work. You just do. Um, I'm going to send a FOIA. Do you know what that is? A Freedom of Information Act. Have you all done that yet? Well, Gilbert Garcia is going to send one. Please do. I'm going to send it for you. <laughs> uh, I'm going to get my my staff here, and, and maybe we're going to become our own Wayne Dochafino, right? Um, of course, you can't do that. The guy's won like 30 Emmys or something <laughs> like that, uh, and I'm just Gilbert. But at the end of the day, uh, I'm going to do it for you, and I'm just going to say, give me all the co correspondence between the city and Graham. Just, just I want to know. I'm, I'm curious. Um, so I'm going to do that, and we'll just see what that happens. Um, I'm going to do that, and we'll you know, let's just see. But let's go back for a second. So how did you did how do you know? Did Graham meet with you guys and no, in fact, I'm I on so many levels, I just I don't even have the words to express how I uh how I feel about uh Representative Morales being here with us this morning because um I they did have a meeting finally in January Who? with Greyhound with the elected officials, and so so she's privy to things that I didn't that I didn't hear. But um, but the first we started hearing from elected officials, the first things they told us was they I mean I won't name names, but I saw them on TV just folding their arms and saying there's nothing we can do about it, and so we had like two champions that I heard right away were were. Um, uh, Representative Morales and um, and Senator, State Senator Carol Alvarado, who were willing to call and find out, you know, you need to meet with us and tell us. Um, no one was willing to have a community meeting with the community. And, and they kept saying, no, it's the holidays and, you know, no one's going to be worried about. Well, they weren't worried about it, but the people who lived right there, that was going to be their holiday is dealing with this, right? So, um they, um, they, yeah, they didn't have community meetings until January, February, around that. But time. have they had a community meeting now? They've, they've had, yes, they've, there have been two. One and, with, and are they, are these, um, first of all, you know, the reason why Christina Morales was there? Did you know why? <laughs> there, there are five Christina Morales's. There's five of them. And they go to everything. And so, you know, you, you see her and there, it's like, there's Christina Morales. She's like, wait a minute, wasn't she over there? There's like, there's like five of them. I think so. I mean, it's I unbelievable. So I don't know who does your schedule, but whoever it is, they do a heck of a job. Well, thank you for that, Gilbert. I mean, you're everywhere. Well, I do want to say something that no matter if we talk about the timeline or what happened, the bottom line is this community was not informed about this major transportation hub being put in a residential neighborhood. Yep. And you mentioned this wouldn't happen in River Oaks. At least in River Oaks, they have gates around their homes. They have security cameras. Mm -hmm. They have good police patrol. Guess what? This neighborhood doesn't have that. There's been an increase in crime. There's been an increase in people reporting trespassing on their properties. Wow. Um, and my biggest concern, and the reason I think we should be outraged and they need to move, is because there are literally four schools, if not more, within walking distance of this Greyhound oh, bus on. station. And we know that former inmates from TDCJ, from the state, from federal prisons, and from the county are using that bus station to get to where they got to go. Mm -hmm. And that's why it was always just a haven for crime downtown. And you know what? Maybe those inmates who are being released there are have served their time and they're good people. But sadly, other crime doers are attracted to those type right. of folks and they look for them when they've just gotten out. And, and that's what the problem is. And the data is the data. Correct. You, you can't make a judgment. The data is the data. And I want to come to the data in a second. I want to go back to something. So have you attended one of these meetings? 
Yes. Okay. Yes. And like, who's there from what Graham? Are they just like, uh, are they public relations people or? The, um, yeah. So, so let me say that the first concern and it was, it was legitimate was about safety. So you mean the, as in, um, from the, 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 the bus hitting somebody? No. Um, safety about the, the, the people, criminal the, 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 element the, yeah, I got and all, it. Okay. all of this stuff. So the um, uh, city councilman at that time, um, Gallegos, said, I have money left over. I'm going to put additional security. And the first meeting with the community were all the uh, law enforcement agencies talking about what they were going to do. But my thing is that why should we be burdened with additional funding when we didn't ask for that in right. the neighborhood? And, um, and there was, there was more, we, we talk about some people, I think that in the um, Houston landing article, they said, you know, the increase has been very minimal that the, uh, my, my work in, in the East end is with the East end communities. That's a, a collaborative and we're funded by the hog foundation. So it's, it's, we're concerned with the mental health of the neighborhood and all the social determinants. So whether the, the, uh, whether the statistics say, Oh, there's nothing to worry about. There is that fear. And that fear is real. That perception is real for the residents. All it takes is one person, right? That's right. So it's, I mean, whether the numbers go up or down, people are, are stressed, they're anxious, they're, you know, they're afraid. So all of that is, is real and no level of increased um, security. You know, security is going, going to help. The other thing is, I don't think they asked Greyhound. I, th I would think that the first thing would have been ask Greyhound to put additional security right. in here. Why should we be? Uh, yeah. Why should the taxpayers do it? And why should Robert, uh, Robert McGay, who's got so many money that he could do other things, use his money? Well, it was at, at the end of his I term. Know, but, but I mean, but yeah. he could have done something else. In he other words, why? Else, and it, yes. it seems to me if they're moving there, it should be their responsibility. Yeah. So, so the first uh, meeting was uh, with all the law enforcement agencies. Um, they did they they had the maybe government relations it's it wasn't mm -hmm. the top people who who came no right and they're there and they're like saying they got a happy face all the time and you know uh, they yeah. want to be good neighbors is what yeah. they're saying now but a good neighbor does not sneak in in the middle of the night right and and <laughs> what's going to happen to how many bays did you say there were at this new facility three there's three so if you had 15 and then you're three. Well, you don't have to be very smart to do, you know, you know what Gazenta means? Three goes into 15, five times, you know, Gazenta. <laughs> uh, you know, how there's going to be so many buses. There's no way they're going to be able to put them in those bays. They guarantee right? a certain number of departures and arrivals, but still it's, it's you know. But it's got to be huge. It's got to be like triple because they have to take care of all those buses that were here over here. I wonder if we could find out how many buses and how many people went through there. I don't know, every week. I mean, that would be something to ask because whatever the number was, that's what it's going to end up there. Oh, at mid and and yes. yeah, that's what's going to end up in the East end right? because they're going to end up moving their business there. And the uh, the other concerns are that station backs into like three, I think there's three homes that share a fence. So there was a video someone posted of there's a man like directing the the uh, Greyhound bus and he backs into the fence. Right. So <laughs> it's like, I don't know how. And I mean, it's not funny, but you can't help. You can't make it up. No. I mean. And, and there is a, a law about how long they can idle yeah. for environmental reasons, yeah. how long they can idle. I, I don't know. I mean, there, there are a lot of things that uh, Im, are impacting that, uh, that community, the congestion, the traffic, the, the fear of crime, the, uh, you know, the environment, the emissions. And so it just, it just doesn't, doesn't make sense. And one resident said uh, they're supposed to, if you know Harrisburg, the street on, to the south side is capital. Uh, supposedly they're, they're supposed to go down Harrisburg, turn around down Capitol um, instead of down Canal, which would run in front of a school and into more houses. And so they told me they've seen the Greyhound buses going down in front of the school. Right now, I think that school is um, 
is closed for remodeling, but there's there's still you know children. So they're not they're not going the the route that they said they were going to go. No, is that what you mean? No, and right through you know neighborhoods. Yeah, um, we're, we're gonna we're gonna talk more about it. I think we have another caller here. Let's let's put him through. And of course, that number is eight three two five seven zero eight zero seven five. We're talking about you know Greyhound moving to the East End, but more importantly, we're really talking about you know what rights do people have uh, to really self determine their neighborhood and things inside their neighborhoods. I mean, you know, that's really what this is all about. Is there a Vicky Cruz on the line, or did we lose her? Oh. Vicky, I think we lost you, but feel free to call in again, Vicky. Um, but that's really what this is all about. And maybe, you know, when people, I always hear people say, oh, here she comes again, I think. Hang on one second. Vicky? Let's put it through. Okay, one moment. Is there a Vicky Cruz there? Vicky. Vicky. There. Are you there, Vicky? I am, Gilbert. How are you today? I am doing well. You know, it's Monday, and I'm just ready to just just knock everything out of, uh, that I have on the list for the week and just knock it out today. I love it. I love it. Well, we're having a very interesting uh, topic today. And I have, of course, uh, Christina Morales, our state rep, and then I have Ms. P P P excuse me, Cabrera Patricia, who's been a longtime East End activist and lives there and has lived in there her whole life. Uh, and we're just talking about the Greyhound bus moving from Midtown with their big, massive bays and everything else. And now they've moved into Magnolia Park. Uh, what do you got for us, oh, Vicky? Well, I know that too. I mean, I'm a, I mean, was um, not so much born. I was right around the corner raised in Pecan Park, but um, I did live um, um, in East End and I have family members in the east end but yeah i mean it's just it's it's a situation that i'm confident that our constituents are looking into it christina state representative has done a great job with um staying on top and getting the resources in along you know with the for the constables and everyone working together with our councilman martinez so uh i was really concerned and uh, about the whole situation i do have investment there um business and what have you so it's one of these things that definitely we've got to all be mindful but i also think be more solution minded of how we can tackle the problem with the adequate amount of resources that we currently have in the community well you just brought up an element that we had not said yet uh and i think it's a good one to talk about which is what's it going to do for real estate values there in the community it certainly can't help them just like no matter what, you can't say crime's going to go down there. I mean, you, you, a, a rational person would say it's going to have an impact. And, you know, we got to collect the data. But l let's go to your other point, though, Victor, which I think is a good one, which is what do we do now? Now that we know it's here, you know, uh, it seems to me, how do we keep it from getting too many I mean, how do we sort of like, all right, you're here, let's lock in and let's not have any more. And how do we make sure there's plenty of security? And how do we enforce these buses, like how they come out and how they, you know, veer, veer around and so forth? It seems to me that's probably the best we can hope for right now anyways. Vicki, what are your well, thoughts on that? Well, I don't think it's a good location being that it's right there and it's like one one like uh, lane streets. I was um, driving by there one time and I was kind of intimidated. Uh, like it, it was just it was not a good feeling when I was at the light because they were just, you know, people crossing the street, not being respectful of the of the of, you know, the crosswalk. And um, and I just felt like, OK, doors are locked. Is everything OK? It's what's going on. I mean. Uh, but it's, you know, I just don't think it's a good location. Well, um, uh, do you think that they'll reach that conclusion with time to say, you know, it's just so much trouble for our drivers and we just can't get in and out and the neighbors are hurt, it's giving us hell. I mean, and then look for a different location. I mean, I wonder if this is a way of a, an intermediate step to something else. 
I mean, I mean, well, I, I mean, it should be. I think it should be. I mean, just for safety reasons. I mean, hey, I mean, how we can't get around a one way street, right? And so, with that said, I mean, you said the second thing right on the head, um, Gilbert. You talked about safety. You know, the abandoned buildings that are there, and they're not even just blocks away. I mean, I did a lot of um, in the past uh, senior community. You know. Uh, senior ministry right there in those little areas between Magnolia Center and then at the villas, uh, Las Velas right there that's um, not even 100 yards away. I mean, these seniors walk to stores. They walk to the Walmart. I mean, the Whataburger. They do their little daily walks. And those things can't happen anymore for them. Well, you know, what? also when I heard the word bike lanes, I'm thinking, oh, my God, someone's going to get hit by a bus, you know, because – I mean, I love bikers, but you know what? They're not really paying attention. Uh, and, so, I mean, that's what I see. And at the end of the day, oh, my God, a big old bus coming and bam. I, oh, heaven forbid. We had a couple of comments. Stay with us, Vicky, because we, we had a couple of comments. Go back with some of those. We're getting lots of comments here. The, show me Grant, Jennifer Grant. This is a the, uh, Maritza. Thank you. This is impactful to be having this conversation. I so appreciate that. What else do we have? Good discussion. David Contreras. Thank you, sir. Um, there was one that was, um, go back, Jennifer Grant. Go back to Jennifer. Jennifer, I saw this. I encourage all activists, organizers, and elected officials to join or converse with the organizers in. You know, I will never be able to say all those letters. But the bottom line is, if you go, how can someone see that? Um, is any, uh, she go, also, she goes, um, she wrote not to, de to detract from this very impactful episode of conversation to contact me or follow my personal page. So I don't know. Let's find a way to go to Jennifer Grant's page, somebody, not necessarily at my show here, but just in general, Jennifer Grant, maybe there's someone there. Cause I know she's an activist. Uh, we've had her on the show a while back. So Jennifer, thanks for that. Uh, here we go. Here's another one. Morris Broussard, why would you not keep Greyhound close to downtown but move it into a community district? Morris, that's what inquiring minds like mine want to know. That's exactly right. So I just noticed there were just a bunch of comments. So, uh, but Vicki, what do you think? What, I mean, uh, if you had a wand and where we are now, what, do you, what would you hope for? Well, a, mag a magic like wand, that is. The magic wand would be that, one, the community gets heard out, right? That we work together with, because no matter where we go, the location in itself is not good because of the one lane. Let's, let's just be realistic on that, okay? Location is not good because of the abandoned building. So, yes, we will need to have security. And I think that there was extra funding that was given out, from what I understand, to the constable's office. And, um, and so for security, but again, there's only so much security that can go on within a so far perimeter perimeter that what's going to happen when people start walking away, um, into blocks away where there's children, where there's a, a school cross down the street or three blocks down, there's just, you know, what's going to happen to those, you know, those kind of situations, I think it's going to always take community. It's always going to take people coming together, like 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 they just mentioned, you know, organizations that have come together. It'll take people being a bridge, um, always working with our politicians, um, being a bridge, um, being a bridge for um, developing the community. You know, having resources for these people because I definitely don't want to. We don't want to write anybody off, brother. We're we're brothers and sisters in the Lord. We are believers and people and have hope in people to know that people can, you know, if there are people coming out of TDC, maybe we can have people, uh, you know, um, you know, ministries out there, organizations out there that can catch them, that can minister love to them, whether it's the church, whether it's, you know, people just have to come together and get ignited to support these people that are coming out here if there's really a deep concern. Because like I said before, politicians are not going to change everything. They can't change almost anything. Look at Whitmire, right, who steps into office and before you know it, he's got more battles than God knows what, you know, it, it, on his desk already. I mean, the guy needs to do what he says he's going to do, and I know that he can do it. But now that we've got more fires going on in the city, it's like, hey, but it takes the people. It takes the leader. It takes, you know, all of us to come together. This isn't a red thing. This isn't a blue thing. This is a community thing that we together can make it happen, you know. But again, it takes, I mean, with everything, it takes funding. 
It takes um, it takes the time. It takes the energy. It takes the hope to say, you know what? We can make this work together. And I know that there's been people going by Gilbert feeding um, the people mm -hmm. coming off that are out there. They've been feeding them, leaving them sandwiches, you know, maybe giving them some tracks, giving them. So I'm grateful for that. As much as sometimes it's, it gets shut down, at least they're getting something. The people that are coming out of TDC or maybe people, we don't know their situations, you know, um, but, but, you know, I mean, they're riding the, the, the bus for something. Um, so they get off and, you know, somehow we can just encourage somebody. We got to teach people how to encourage one another, Gilbert. And and look at things as a, a a way to come together as a community for a solution. If it doesn't work with that little location, let's get you know find another place. Well, you know what, David, I'm going to take the hill right now <laughs> because you got me energized. I am going. <laughs> Boy, you you got me motivated there. I'm gonna I'm gonna take the hill. Uh, Vicky, thank you so much for calling in. I sure hope you call in again. Hey, of course. And thanks so much. And again, tell people, um, everybody about that hero program, we're going to be going in so we can prevent, um, you know, more crime in the city and the hero program. I'm going to go ahead and announce it is, is, is teaching kids how to be helpful, encouraging, respectful, and on task. And to the community listen, um, listeners, go check out mission one USA.com to talk about the, the values that we're going to be teaching our children into the school district and great news, Gilbert, we're going to Harris County, 1500 students, the bridge over troubled waters. We're getting a date to start over there to teach their children. So we are just launching and taking off and God is opening up doors so we can be the bridge between children and their own personal lives and parents and their schools and communities. This is a solution. Well, I know that you, you want to talk to me about it. I, I think we have something on the calendar, if I'm not mistaken, but if we don't, yep, we will. we're meeting on Wednesday. We, we yeah. need you. We, we're going to meet on Wednesday. Okay, well, I will see you Wednesday. Uh, thank see you, Vicky, for calling Bye, in. guys. All righty, all righty. Let's come back for a second because uh, do we know the, st the crime stats? Have, have they gone up? Do we know or do we don't know? I mean, th I thought somebody you said had l looked into that, but no, maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, there are, there are residents who are tracking them because they're available to us. But look, if I could, uh, please, I want to thank uh, Miss Cruz for calling in because I I think we don't have a whole lot of time to take on this big big issue, but she made a very good point, and that is um, the um, it is not just a pity party for Magnolia Park. Right. We're, we're upset. They didn't do this the right way. But uh, I think I've, I've talked to Christina and I, I've talked to Joaquin about how, you know, we may not the moving Greyhound out of there may be just a very small part of this big picture. And it may be a great gift and opportunity for us in Magnolia Park to look at what what can we do? Other cities. Houston is a big city. Other cities have uh, a transit center, multimodal center where uh, they can move all of these different uh, types of, of uh, uh, transportation to one place. Uh, maybe this is a this is an opportunity to look at what we can do. And the uh, Harrisburg Boulevard has a lot of potential. And and you know this is out of my lane because I'm my concern is with what the community is saying and what they feel but they're so proud of their of magnolia park they are so proud and what happened really hurt but but from that hurt i think what miss cruz is saying is absolutely right we can come together and and find a solution that's bigger than just these concerns because um i don't think our elected officials i mean i know they want the best for us and, but they can't always do it by themselves, but they move in circles that some of us at the grassroots level don't move. Mm -hmm. So this is a big conversation about what are the opportunities there for Magnolia Park and for Harrisburg. And, um, you know, I just um, I'll, I'll pass this on to this because I think that we can get uh, we can turn this around for the community. Well, we have no choice but to do it. Yeah, I mean, uh, I I really appreciate Vicky calling in because she did talk about solutions, and that's what that's where we need to to be, and we do need the community the community's input. And I don't think there's been a good opportunity for the community to chime in. We are um, constituents do reach out, and I know you do your surveys, um, Patricia, um, but. <clears throat> 
for the most part, what I'm hearing is the community doesn't think it's a good fit. The traffic is an issue. Now we have this um, mental anguish from people who are worried. Uh, we had a woman come and tell us a story that she was afraid to go to the, there's a water burger there. And you got to imagine in a community like this, the family may go together to just mm -hmm. grab some burgers right. for a quick dinner when they're taking their kid to soccer games or whatever. And now they were a little nervous to go there because there was um, a lot of people who were obviously not from the neighborhood hanging out at the Whataburger. So there's a lot of impacts that this is making environmental uh, safety. And you mentioned something earlier, which just really disappointed me. I don't want to see our city council member using whatever funds that they get on just this one private right. business. That is not fair to this community who already uh, needs more amenities. Honestly, I mean, just drive by there. We need more amenities from our city, from our council member in that area. And it shouldn't be used on police officers to patrol this area. So I would like to see us all come together with a solution. I think from my point of view, or from what we're working on, we're trying to organize more folks in the community to speak up about this. And then, um, and all of this happened so quickly that as elected officials, we weren't able to come together and have this one unified message yet, but I think that's coming. Mm -hmm. And in the meantime, we just um, keep track of the numbers and see what, what's going on with the, um, with the crime rate there. Well, I, I think we got to do something because you know what else? Everyone who's listening, maybe it doesn't affect you right now, but something else could. So in other words, if this can happen to here in the East, it can happen anywhere. So that is why we've got to find some processes or something or procedures to protect the neighborhoods. Let's go. We got more callers. Uh, we got an Alex and a Mary. We're going to do Alex first. Alex, Hello. are you there? Hi, uh, Gilbert. Can you hear me? I can hear you. What do you got there, Alex? You got a tip from Gilbert's. Hi, Gilbert. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Uh, first of all, I want to say thank you all for your time and, and having this important conversation because I think this is just another example of, of disenfranchised communities being taken advantage of for the sake of other people's convenience. Uh, we think 45 expansion, that's just an, another, and, and that one at least had some discourse uh, going on, which allowed people to put in their, import, their, their input, but sure, even though some of that never really was taken, you know, uh, uh, seriously, and they're still going along with the project, but uh, it, it's just really frustrating to see because you know they, they teach us growing up, be a part of the community, uh, uh, go to those those town hall meetings. Uh, I, I I went to the Moody Hall, Moody Park uh, conversation when they had one um, in in my neighborhood, but it's just really upsetting to see this, especially happening to the East End community, which is. Uh, uh, close to my heart, I, I actually went to school to Yes Prep East Stand, so seeing that uh, 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 happen there is, is a little disheartening. But I just wanted to say or, or ask better yet, what what can we do if if what we're doing so far isn't enough? Well, I for me, first you just got to make people aware because if you don't make them aware, but they'll become aware when something bad happens to them. Or, you know, they see a wreck somewhere and they're like, oh, my God, when did all this happen? Uh, I think these community meetings are good, but I think we got to have when you have one, you got to have some action items at the end rather than we met and we all talked. But we really need to end with. And therefore, what are we going to do next? Uh, you know, can Greyhound limit the number of buses going through there? Can uh, Greyhound adhere to the. Uh, the road to come in and out to re they don't revere into the uh, the schools. Well, what can they do for more security? I just think there's a lot of things that can be done. Uh, so let's just all keep going and mm -hmm. uh, and let's just figure it out. And I think Patricia, if there's ever a community meeting or something, would you let me know if people want to talk about it? Uh, I'm happy to, maybe I need to do my show live over there and let people talk about it on the air, just everybody. But at the end of the day, I want to do whatever I can because this can happen anywhere. Next mm -hmm. thing you know, there's another cement plant or there's another, you know, uh, dump or something. It can happen anywhere. That's why when some people say things like, oh, I'm not for zoning, nobody's for zoning until there's something in their net backyard. And they're like, then they're like, how did that happen? 
Well, that's what happens when you have absolutely no zoning. You can have these things. Uh, so, Alex, thank you for calling in, and I hope you call in again. For sure. Thank you. Now, we had another caller there. Who was that at last? Put? I want to make sure I get them all in. Who was it? Mary. Mary. Mary, are you there? Yes. Mary. Mary. Yes, sir. I'm here. Hello. Hello, Mary. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? How are you guys doing? Good, good, good. What do you got for us on a tip from Gilbert? Well, um, I wanted to ask in the future, you know, what strategies can be employed to foster greater communication and collaboration between Greyhound city leaders, activists, and East End residents in addressing the challenges associated with the relocation or any future changes? I mean, the answer is, I don't know, but I know one thing, things like this don't just happen. So what does that mean? Was a, a planning commission involved? I mean, someone had to have gotten a permit or something to expand this bay. Um, someone had to have known. I mean, I mean, in other words, things don't just happen. There's there's different um, notices and so forth. And I think we just need to go back. My hunch is this has been in the works for probably a year because it takes a long time to make such a move. But to your point there, Mary, I think the real thing is um, – we got to have hope and we got to communicate and we got to continue to speak up and speak out. Uh, and our elected officials that are there, remember, they need help. Uh, when they say things like community meetings and this and that, they want the citizens to participate. And so we've got to help our elected officials to do the things that they want to do on our behalf. Because if they don't hear enough of us, then they might think, well, I guess it's not a big deal. Uh, and all of them are in the business of, uh, you know, writing laws and ordinances that affect our lives in all these areas. So, Ms. Uh, Representative, what do you think? I mean, you, you know what I mean? I mean, I, yes. I can imagine you, when you say, okay, we're going to have this and the participation is low, just like voting is low. I mean, that's got to be frustrating, which is come on. And, and so we need people in being involved all the time. It is, it is hard for working families and families with small children to um, show up to a town hall meeting and participate. I know that there is an organization in the East End who's trying to um, create a way for people to um, sign uh, some sort of petition to ask Greyhound to, you know, have better security or move out. So I know that's in the works right now. Again, this all happened so quickly. Mm -hmm. And as far as the permitting that, 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 we, that we know of, but keep going. Correct. Yeah, yeah. You're, yeah. This happened so quickly as far as uh, the community being uh, informed about this. But as far as Greyhound moving into that area, I believe it was, I saw somewhere that it, maybe even as far back as 2017 that they started leasing a portion of that property so they didn't need to get any more permits they were already um, able to operate at a small level there and so when they had to move and now I'm hearing about this letter that you mentioned I didn't know anything about that letter um, well where are they going to move where they have a small lease already but this is such a big operation to put in such a small area and it is causing it really is causing havoc on that community yeah think about it again if there's 15 bays mm -hmm. you can't put 15 buses lanes bay the the amount that go through there on a three bay location unless their business is shrinking and they're not doing as many routes and things like, i mean may i mean i don't know but i think if that were the case they should let us know they should totally let us. They should let us know, know. Yes. so we could better understand what's happening and why. Mm -hmm. um, but Mary, what do you think, Mary? Let me ask you this, Mary. Um, you don't live in that area, do you, or do you? No, but I have family that live over there. Um, that's why this issue is so, uh, I guess, important to me. Well, we appreciate that. Have any of them said anything to you? And, and if they're not, do, do me a favor. Just keep your ears open. Um, again, you're a good uh, test case, which is the more we talk about it, the more people can get involved and the more you can make something happen. 
so, so do any of them say anything to you or no? No, not at all. I don't believe they were even aware of the issue, uh, which is why, you know, going back to your point, we need to, you know, spread the word, uh, get more people involved. Well, Mary, I appreciate you calling and I hope you call in again. Yes, of course. Thank you for having me on. Oh, always. Thank you. So let me ask you this. So your group is called what? Eastern Communities. And so, and, and what do y'all meet? How often? And, and what? how is that different from, say, uh, the East End Alliance or something like that? Or the East End Management District? I mean, what, what, what is y'all's focus? We're a collaborative of, uh, started with uh, 12 organizations, uh, service providers there in the in the neighborhood, um, Center Corazon, Community Family Center, Sarah Jobs, um, and then the Sisters of Charity. Oh, so you're some groups. sort of umbrella of all these groups, but because our, we but all our, know all those groups. Yes, but our focus is to get the residents engaged and speaking. So we've been uh, organizing in the community, and uh, we meet on a monthly basis. Right now we're working on an action plan. But we work in complement to the civic associations, mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. East End Alliance. We can partner. We partner with them, and so uh, our our issue is exactly what you're talking about. There are uh, town halls, community meetings, and all of the usual suspects show up, and we have like a handful of of residents. Mm -hmm. So it's really getting residents to feel comfortable coming to these meetings, um, knowing what questions to ask. And and calling their own meetings if they if they need to, right? Um, also participating in their civic associations because uh, those those are set up for for elected officials to visit, and so that that's our work right now. We we were working on our action plan, and there's a, a priority from the community. It was identified from the community that was look, feel, and safety. So we were working on that when this Greyhound issue came mm -hmm. up. So it was a perfect case in point mm -hmm. of what we were working towards. Well, when, just real quick, give us the, the uh, lowdown. Do you have a website or, or where, when do you all meet and where, et cetera? Yes. So our website is eastendcommunities.org. We have a Facebook page and uh, under East End Communities, and you uh, can find out when our next meetings are, are going to be there. Wonderful. Well, let me ask you that at some point, uh, representative, I want to get you here because I don't know. It's got to be so chaotic and so frustrating to be serving in the legislature these days. I mean, it's just open war warfare now on the Democrat on the uh, the GOP these days. Um, and I don't recall, you know, people targeting people and all these sorts of things. Um, it's just getting kind of mean, isn't it? I mean, it is. I mean, right? <laughs> It's just mean. Yes, this last legislative session was very, very difficult, particularly for Democrats and a progressive like me. Um, and, you know, what we know about the next leg legislative session, it's going to be even more difficult. We're already hearing um, that they don't want uh, Democrats to serve as chairs of committees. You know, they're even talking about not allowing us to pass any pieces of legislation things like that are what we're hearing. And if people don't get out and vote <laughs> in these certain areas, um, we we are really going to have a tough time next session. Oh, my goodness. That is why we are so grateful that you're serving, because if there's anyone that can raise hell, it's you. And, and, <laughs> and, but you do it in such a nice way, but yet it's so effective. But my gosh, you're out under, uh, outnumbered. We are outnumbered. And it's all these urban areas that have Democrats as their representatives. So there's always these attacks on urban cities and issues that affect, you know, a city like Houston. That's what we see. So <clears throat> it, it's a tough place to be. But I'm very proud, always very proud to represent my community. And I will always speak up. And I appreciate the work that Patricia is doing with yep. East End Communities because we do need to get our community out to vote. 
and you're knocking on doors and meeting people at the grassroots level. And we appreciate you for that. Thank I you. want to do one clarification because I don't want anyone to get it wrong, which is when you, you know, uh, the representative mentioned the word progressive. Don't let people, you know, warp that word progressive. <laughs> All progressive means is you care about people and you believe that government has an obligation to serve the people. That's all it means. Sooner or later, it's going to be warped into some something terrible, and that's not the case. So please, when you hear that word, it just means that really you're just a humanitarian. You just care about people, and government has an obligation to take care of people. I think we're are, are we up, we're almost done. Are we 30, 10 seconds, 10, 9? This is Gilbert Garcia saying thank you for listening. Come back next time. I want to make sure, which is, of course, next week, I want to make sure we say thank you to uh, Mrs. Cabrera and, of course, Representative Mar Mareles and everyone out there. Let's, this wait, this, let's make Andrew this a Garcia. better place for Listen everyone. To my radio show, a tip and we'll see you Gilbert. next time. Talk, inspiration, and prayer every Monday from 11 a.m. till noon on Houston's Gospel Leader, KWWJ. 1360 AM and streaming live on KWWJ.org. Listen on the legendary KYOK 1140 AM and streaming live on KYOKradio.org. KCOH 1230 AM, The Source on Sand Geek Radio 95.1 FM 1460 AM and Aliento Radio 101.7 FM and 1540 AM. Call in at 832 2570 8075 and follow me on social media. See you then.